all the products we use from the spigot to the RV water inlet port. After three years of full-time RV traveling and connecting our water to over 115 campsites, we have developed a process to connect quickly, leak-free, and keep the water clean. I'm gonna go over how we connect to all the products we use from the spigot to the RV water inlet port. The one thing I always attach and screw onto on every campsite that has a freshwater spigot is my water pressure regulator and this two-way splitter. But screwing in with this small attachment to the campground spigot is really hard on my arthritic hands. This device is awesome. This is the hose grip from RV Cable Grip. In addition to this short version, they also have a version with a six inch hose. Since I got this device and permanently added to my regulator and two-way hose adapter, it makes attaching to the spigot easier, quicker, and less painful on my hands. It has this nice big handle. I just bring it up to there and screw it on. It's so much better than trying to turn this little thing with my fingers. This is the first thing that I have ever bought at an RV show. I was amazed at its simple ingenuity. I'm also hoping that this bright red handle will alert me and remove my regulator when leaving a campground. We've had this on our pack up checklist, but I recently left a regulator and a two way adapter at a campground in North Carolina. So whoever came into site 19, you're welcome. I add this to my two way splitter and regulator by just putting it on top and screwing it in, tightening it with a wrench. And now it's permanently mounted my two way adapter and regulator. Now all I have to do is screw it in like that. The nice big handle makes it much easier on my hands and I get it on nice and tight. We also permanently attach this two way hose splitter to the outlet of our pressure regulator. So we always have an extra hose connection for attaching a black flush hose or hose sprayer for various needs. More about why we have two distinct uses for the hose later. Most campgrounds only have one hose spigot available for each site. And the second spigot sometimes is for the neighborhood site. The thing I really like about this two way adapter is the little handles that turn the water on and off are much larger, making it much easier on the hands. We turn our water off every time we leave the RV and turn it back on when we come back. So these little handles are much easier to turn than turning the spigot valve. These two-way splitters are a little bit more expensive than the cheap ones that you'll find at Lowe's or Home Depot, but I hate those little tiny handles. Also, it has a full metal body and is built to last. It is extremely important to never hook up to a water spigot that you don't know without protection. Think of it like stranger danger. You don't know where the water from that spigot came from. This water pressure regu regulator lets you dial in the amount of water pressure that your RV is accepting to its plumbing system. Most RV plumbing systems are not designed to take the kind of pressure that your house has. So limiting the pressure will help protect the crappy plumbing system that your RV came with. A broken RV plumbing connector, hose, or valve can cause all kinds of damage to the RV and tracking it down the, tracking down the brake and fixing it can be difficult and time consuming. Water regulators like this adjustable model are inexpensive protection that you can make part of your normal setup procedure. This pressure regulator lets you adjust the pressure by using a screwdriver to turn the screw right here clockwise to increase the pressure, counterclockwise to decrease the pressure. See the regulated pressure on the dial. They are made of solid brass and cost about $25. We set ours to 45 pounds per square inch. We have used it for three years now and have not had any problems from water pressure. We use these garden hose quick connectors wherever possible to speed up our setup and teardown times. Because we move on an average of every eight days, I use these little plastic ones from Melanor. 
They're only about 15 bucks and come in a five pack that can connect to hose at both ends. I have used many connectors, including those expensive brass ones, but they always seem to leak. I have been using these Melnor ones for about three years and I've not had one leak yet. We have stayed at over a hundred campsites over the last three years. That's a lot of connecting and disconnecting. The five part Melnor connector pack comes with two of the male quick connect to male garden hose. Male garden hose to female quick connect. Female garden hose to female quick connect. Male quick connect to female garden hose. When we pack up at a campground and unscrew the hose grip, we take the regulator, the two-way splitter, and all the quick connectors together as one component so it's ready to go to screw on at the next campground. I have used the same RV Marine rated freshwater hose for over three years. It's not fancy or expensive, but it works. Any hose rated for freshwater drinking will work. Just don't get one of those really crappy ones from Walmart that are too rigid and too hard to coil up when it gets cold. You can get a super flexible, kink-free freshwater hose that packs up easily in a small space, but they're a little bit more expensive. And a heated hose is a great thing to have if you plan on spending any time where it might freeze overnight. We don't have one because we will never get Alice anywhere near icy weather, and I'm too cheap to spend any more money on hoses since ours works fine. Before any water goes into our RV, it goes through a water flow meter. This measures how many gallons of water are going through the hose by spinning a little propeller inside. The meter calculates the flow and displays how many gallons on this little display screen. It connects to the hose through a quick connector. Unfortunately, in this orientation, it puts the display upside down. First, I hit the reset button on the meter to return it to zero anytime I dump my gray tank. As I use water at a campground that does not have a sewer connection, I check the meter periodically to see how much water has entered the RV. This helps me determine how much gray tank capacity I have left and whether or not I can make it to the end of my stay. We can usually go seven to 10 days on a 50 gallon gray tank, or I may have to use my sewer tote to make space in the tank. Those tank indicators that come with RVs either stop working after just a couple of months or are totally inaccurate. Using a water meter is much more precise. In my experience, only a small amount of water goes into the black tank during our stays. So if we have used 45 gallons, according to the meter, about 40 gallons has gone into the gray tank. Looking at the meter periodically also helps us conserve water by measuring how much water each activity uses during those times that we dry camp or boondock, we want to make sure we make it through the reservation without pulling out the waste tote. For instance, we can see exactly how much each of us use in a shower by recording the meter before and after the shower and then subtract. Alice loves it when I praise her for taking a two gallon Navy shower. The meters are only about $25 and give you a lot of valuable information. The water meter attaches to this flexible hose connector that attaches to the RV fresh water inlet. I just put my quick connector on there. This snaps into here, and then this connects up to my fresh water inlet. This small section of hose has a spring coil to protect it and take the strain off the RV water inlet. These RV water inlet connections are prone to breaking and leaking if there is too much strain. These only cost about $12. You pick one up at most Walmarts or on Amazon. They are worth it. This hopefully will protect you from a very troublesome repair. If you don't have a built-in filter like we do, you will want to use an inline filter like this Camco filter. It is supposed to make your water drinkable, but I wouldn't trust it for that. I mentioned before, you really don't know what kind of water is coming in 
from your campground spigot, but it will remove sediment and particles in the water that may collect in your water heater and your pipes. I always mark mine after I change the filter every six months. When we are at a site like this with a sewer connection, which is rare for us, we keep the black tank hose connected to the other side of the two-way splitter. I also installed an anti-siphon valve on our two-way splitter that goes between a quick connect and the black hose. This makes sure water from the black hose cannot back up and contaminate our fresh water connection. But a lot of times when I'm using the black hose and flushing out the black tank at a place where I have a sewer connection, I shut off the fresh hose while the black hose is connected. That just also helps keep any water from the black hose from getting in contaminating the fresh hose. The NA siphon valve also has this little screen built into the rubber washer. What this helps because water coming from this black hose is going into the black tank unfiltered. This helps pick up any little extra particles that might have been collecting in the hose or from the suspect spigot at the campground. The anti-siphon valve is an inexpensive way to protect your fresh water supply costing about $13. Any hose used to connect to the black tank rinse inlet on the RV or connect to the RV spigot at a dump station should be a dedicated black tank use only hose. I use an old hose that I used to use as a backup for fresh water and now use it for my black tank. And I have it clearly marked in Magic Marker here for black tank use only. And I also wrote black on the little yellow thing that uh, tightens it on. But I recommend using a colored hose like the orange black tank hose that comes from Camco or just a normal green garden hose as long as you know it is for the black tank rinse only. We also use this hose for washing the truck and RV and other uses with a sprayer attachment. The black hose uses another quick connect to attach to the anti-siphon valve to make setup and pack up quicker and easier on the hands. Before any water goes into the black tank rinse port, it goes through this rain wave water meter. I use this different type of water meter for the black tank so I won't mix it up with the fresh water meter. It's important to measure all the water going into your black tank rinse port so you don't overflow during the procedure. I'll go over the whole procedure in a future video. When flushing the black tank with the black tank waste valve closed to fill up the tank to wash it out, you want to make sure you do not overfill the tank or disaster. The toilet will overflow with the black tank contents. Many people recommend you do not put water in your black tank with the black tank waste valve closed. We do it to make sure the black tank and sewer hoses get completely cleaned out. But be very careful doing this. The water meter helps make sure that you don't overfill the tank. I also put on a 10 minute timer on my phone to remind me that I'm filling the black tank. A couple more things I wanna go over are some of the extra things that I keep around. First of all, I keep around a bunch of these really heavy duty, thick Camco washers for hoses. They're much better than those uh, crappy ones you can get in a sheet that got the little tabs on them. They're thick and they fit perfectly inside either my Quick Connect or in the actual hoses themselves. In addition to that, I also keep some of these Camco washers with the integrated uh, screen and I use those in places that I'm trying to catch some of the debris that may be coming through the hose before it gets into my filter. I also keep lots of extra Quick Connect parts around. I actually just keep them right up here in this little cup up here so that if I need an extra quick connect component, I've got it handy. Now, sometimes working at night, I use this little light up here, but sometimes that's not enough light. So I keep a flashlight magnetic to on right here inside the uh, wet bay. Another extra thing I keep around is a small extra regulator. This is one that's uh, preset at 50 pounds. It's got a little uh, dial on it to tell you how much pressure is coming in. Um, when I left my main regulator at a campground, when I got there, I realized I wasn't gonna drive hundreds of miles back to get it, so I used my backup. 
Another thing I love to have in my wet bay right here, I have a paper towel roll, which is great for drying your hands after washing them. I also have a soap dispenser. I keep soap right here. I have a little uh, 3D printed uh, container for holding that. And then I also have hand sanitizer that I keep in here because a lot of times I don't have water to rinse off. And a lot of times I'll wash my hands, dry them, and then use hand sanitizer. Now my little shower connector inside here works great, but I don't like to have that whole hose operation out here to do that. So I've taken one of the little quick connectors that fit in there. I have it on a little leash, I pop it in there. And then when I'm ready to, I can just put the, put the hose on and use water right from here to wash my hands when there isn't water available at a dump station. Well, I hope you found this video interesting or informative or maybe picked up a couple of tips. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you have a different process for connecting the fresh and black water hoses at the campgrounds, Pickett, or if you have any questions. I would love to hear your suggestions. If you found this video helpful, please click, click the like button down below and check out another video right here I think you will find interesting. And remember, downsizing does make sense.